Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob Scribner, your host, and thanks for listening been a great week once again we're down here at fort mcdowell in arizona and the word for today is hot (laughs) and it's probably not hot compared to where a lot of folks are at but for me it's hot and it's probably just getting in the 85s or something like that but and remember we come from the northwest (laughs) and on our way down we've been kind of staying a high elevation so Getting used to hot is going to take a while. Now, Sherry and I used to live in Arizona, so we know what to expect, but it's still hot. (laughs) So, anyway, nice to have you listening to the show. Welcome, and let's get started. Now, I have to admit, when you talk about RVing, it always sounds happy-go-lucky all the time. And yeah, we do talk about a little crises and stuff like that, but I want to talk to you about a observation of an RVer that I met and is actually near our, our site. And I don't know whether to be happy or sad, but uh, it was kind of interesting. We uh, pulled in at the particular place we're at and met this very nice gentleman and been very kind and got to talking and he was outside a lot but was outside a a whole lot but I never noticed a spouse and very very friendly like uh, real storyteller type person but alone and you could kind of tell it wasn't voluntary. Now, I haven't been brave enough to find out why. And uh, it kind of gets me to thinking to, I don't know, I just want to talk about this a little bit, that the RV situation isn't necessarily a happy-go-lucky, new way of life, get freedom, the whole works. In fact, a lot of folks out here that are RVing are not, chasing some crazy dream they're just RVing (laughs) they don't need to define it they're just doing it and it's not uh, I mean I guess you could call it their freedom but they're not trying to define it they're just RVing and some have houses some are gone for you know like well they're snowbirds and they're not making this big statement they're just doing it And then there's folks out here that, uh, you know, we're we're fighting the clock, uh, getting older. And uh, folks, they have health issues or they have cancer in their life. Maybe their spouse passes away. And yet they still do this activity. And in a sense... It's happy, it probably brings back great memories, but it's also lonely, but gives satisfaction. And so I guess the big thing is, you know, everybody gets this big picture uh, from the videos that come out. And and like I said, 98, 97 maybe, percent of all the RVers out here are not documenting like we are and uh, making videos. They're just RVing. And I know I've, I've said this before, and <laughs> anyway, um, I guess it's really important when you're at the RV parks and stuff that you're going to see and talk to so many different variations of RVing. And here's another one that um, I'm guessing that this particular person is uh, still kind of going through the motions of what he must have done with his spouse. And you can see, sits outside, enjoys a glass of wine, reads a lot. But most of the time, I see him just kind of daydreaming. 
And maybe it's my imagination kind of making the story up, and, and it's I really am not going to go over and interrogate the guy to find out his uh, past. But uh, it just makes you realize that everybody has a different life out here. And I, I, I just get, a, I, I, my fear is folks defining it as just one way and it's oh it's the life for me um i don't know i just want you to make sure that before you become an rver or at least doing a full timing thing think it through real well make sure that your spouse is on board and think about what if the spouse isn't with you anymore it may be actually nice this way that kind of keeps a person that's by themselves uh social uh, <laughs> RV park is the best place to be social and uh, uh, keeps them stimulated and if that's the answer then yep welcome to the RV lifestyle so this brings me to kind of wanting to talk a little bit about what it's like at, at least our side of uh, the fence when it comes to this documentation we're doing, uh, podcasts and videos and and blogs and Facebook and etc. And uh, some folks are really good at it. In fact, I think they just make it their life 24-7. And so uh, I guess I'm going to try to describe to you a little bit what it's like um, to have a podcast we'll talk about the podcast first because I don't know how many times I run into people I interview them and they say oh, I'm going to do a podcast too I like podcasts and they I don't know I, 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 every time I've heard it a couple of times but anyway to do a podcast and let it grow which has been growing ours and boy think people have been watching us and li well, listening to us <laughs> I keep wanting to say watching or what listening. It's like I get them mixed up between the channels and everything. But um, first of all, it's great to have you. And it's great to see us grow every week. And we get more feedback and stuff. And, um, and I, I'm going to put a thumbs up to a gal named Jennifer who was listens to us, gave us some great feedback about how we uh, have been doing support to some outside organizations and uh, whether you know we make it clear if, if it's a sponsor or someone we're supporting. And lately we've been just doing some support. Some uh, organizations have uh, done some positive things for us and we were just kind of returning the favor and actually got mentioned that some of it was getting kind of repetitive and, and that's understandable. And But with a, a show like ours, we're also always looking for sponsors. And when that happens, we tend to have to uh, talk about them and uh, we will definitely when we have sponsors and they come in and out we make it clear that they actually are uh, the ones we've been having lately have been support so we're they did things for us and we're just kind of returning the favor and doing some exper experimental advertising so I apologize for anything that was uh, repetitive uh, it's just uh, experimenting with new things as we grow uh, we get approached almost every week with something new or a, a, something that people want to do. It's amazing how many people want to do something with you but don't have or can't return the favor or won't. It don't, they just want us to do something for them. And, you know, the podcast costs money and, and things like that. And so, you know, there's a, you know there's, there's a trade going on all the time. And that's really what, you know, this is the American way. It's capitalism. So I apologize for that kind of stuff. But to do a podcast, one is, thank goodness it's once a week. I don't know if I had to do a daily show. <laughs> I'd be really, it'd be my whole life. But it get, every week I have time to kind of contemplate what I'm going to talk about. Sometimes I don't get something right away until actually we start getting comments in. And then they, I, I get uh, I get a perspective that I hadn't considered before, just like Jennifer's, and uh, it really helps. I really like. That's why we ask for the comments. We want to hear. Uh, and uh, this particular person also 
uh, wrote to us privately because they just wanted to be appropriate, and they were, and gave us some great feedback. And so uh, thumbs up, thumbs up, and uh, we get lots of good stuff. Oh, my gosh, really, people, they say they just live for when we have our next show, and that's great, or our next episode. So we really, really appreciate that. And, and if we have good ideas, we appreciate it. And, and yes, as a speaker, I know I have so many improvements to do. And the only way you can get better at it is, is practice. And I know I use the word so too much. And I also say um too much. And I try to catch it. <laughs> but, you know, it's just going to take time. And I appreciate those people who are so patient with me. Uh, I'm real. I'm a real person, not phony. And I um and ands too much, I, I know, and probably don't have the best vocabulary. And I know that, it, but it's me. It's Rob, Rob and Sherry. And I, I hope you love us for what we are. We always want to be better. Everybody should want to be better. But you also got to be happy with yourself. Be happy uh, that you love yourself and do your best to be the best person you can. But anyway, getting back to the subject, we start thinking about the show and we'll have discussions. Or, But uh, most of the time the show is, uh, is determined by things that happen during the week or the comments that come in. I kind of said that already. And... So maybe two, three, maybe the fourth day after the last episode went out, we start cutting into the track. And actually this, the first half of this show was cut a little early because of an email we got in from Jennifer kind of stimulated uh, the conversation. And I thought, you know, I, why this is fresh in my brain? I should talk about it. And, um, and send a message out to you people that we do respond to your feedback and uh we appreciate that and we want to hear about the good too and um, by the way every week now uh, we're starting to get more stickers going out thank you notes uh we it's we're so grateful and like we said we consider the stickers and stuff as a tip when you buy them from us or if you, we have people who just send us support saying thank you and just saying they love the show and uh we are so grateful you know i always talk about grateful and live for the now and smell the roses and 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 you people are are part of that and uh, uh once again we're <laughs> can't thank you enough and it's just amazing to see things growing so uh anyway getting back to the subject again uh, getting ready to cut the tracks. So what we do is start, you know, we will break the show up into modules of different um, things we want to talk about. And sometimes we just rattle on and it just happens. And I do take notes and sometimes I don't. It, it's um, sometimes just free will speaking just comes out nicer than trying to read it off a notepad and uh so we uh we uh have a very nice microphone system it hangs over the dining room table which my wife hates and a mixer and and what we try to do is we cut our tracks with you've noticed at each break uh music and we do that for our style it's the way we like it some people like it some people just want to hear my voice I understand that, um, but they're used to other podcasts and stuff. That's our particular style, and and it kind of sometimes we like to use it for a change of mood, uh, definitely letting you know we're changing the subject, and gives us a little branding as far as that's how we do our podcasts. And and as time goes on, I'm sure that'll change. There'll be different kinds of things. Uh, we're going to have to plug in commercials once in a while. We had that a little bit with RV Lock um, earlier in the year. And uh, that's just how it is. And when we get this thing all recorded, uh, usually we take it up in no more than an hour and get all the tracks the way we want, then we render it. Uh, as 
uh, a soundtrack as an MP4. Then we run it through another piece of software uh, that converts it to MP3, which is the preferred file system to use for podcasts. And again, remember, our podcast is, we took the time to register it with all the podcast directories, uh, iTunes, the, the big one there, and uh, a couple, Stitcher and some other ones. There's quite a few. There's like 20 or 30 of them. And our show shows up in all of them. And our, our, our feed goes to them automatically, and they update our shows automatically in everybody's uh, cell phone. Or should I say people that have the app, apps or software that they monitor different podcasts that they like to watch or listen to. <laughs> so anyway, so once it's made to uh, uh, into an MP3, then we have to create a um, meta tags description, which is uh, not that time consuming. A lot of stuff we have is a cut and paste thing. And we have to create a graphic. And the graphic is for the header of the show. And sometimes those go fast, sometimes they don't. It just depends. And you're trying to make them where they kind of they are catchy, but you don't want to be misleading. And so once you got those three items, the track, the MP3, and then the meta tag, and then the graphic, uh, those all get loaded onto the podcast show, which is at rvtalkradio.com. And the soundtrack gets moved up there and all that. And then from that site, it creates a feed. And that feed is uh, sent to FeedBurner and, and several other podcast directories that um, check for updates constantly. And so whenever we have a new show, they automatically know already. And it's a great feature for those who listen to podcasts so they can see what new episodes are out. But for us, it's not over. It's it's more to that. We also do a video version podcast uh, on our channel at RV, um, RV Travel Buddy. So then we take the soundtrack and everything, which we actually create on a video software because we want to change it over to a video for those who like to just listen to us on a video version which is great and but it's a lot of more work for us which we don't mind so what we do is we take that graphic we made and add that to the soundtrack and sometimes we'll put our trademark information at the end just the trademark you know just the market anyway and we will also put like uh, some um, information on the video like how to subscribe and things like that and the problem with that is every time we do a one hour show a one hour video for those that knows what it's like to upload videos on f Sunday night we're trying to get our show uploaded not only to the podcast which is the easy one because it's just a soundtrack we're also trying to upload a one hour video so remember now not only do we make that video we have to render that video and once that video is rendered, then we upload it to YouTube and also the graphic and the meta tag. So that's kind of the lifestyle of just podcasting. That's just our podcasting. And so, I, you know, that kind of gives you a picture of what having a podcast is kind of like if you decide you want to do one. The other thing that kind of happens is um, sound. Uh, as time goes on, uh, depending if you have a gr if you're at home and you have a room that you can shut the door and everybody leave you alone uh, sound you can get away with pretty relatively inexpensive equipment but uh, like right now you might hear a little bit of humming I'm in an RV and I got air conditioner going off I'm not shutting it off it's hot I already told you it's hot anyway so oh the cat will jump up on the table and she has a little thing that kind of makes a noise and cinders always checking on me and say, you know, she's just pretty much saying, hey, you haven't pet me lately. Uh, I'm going to make some noise and bug you until you do. So uh, just getting back to having, you'll want to get better and better audio equipment. And so uh, to get a good podcast uh, microphone, um, ours is a, a Heel, H-E-I-L, uh, something like that. Um, and it's about a $350, $400 microphone. Plus you got the, the boom it's on and then the mixer. And you, the money can really add up. But you don't need all this stuff at first. But 
if you find out you enjoy podcasting, then investing in good sound, people appreciate that. It, it comes across. And our earlier episodes, you could definitely see we're struggling with good audio quality. And so we've kind of, I think, gotten over that and has really made a difference in our shows. So that's the life of podcasting. But let's change the subject to these videos we have to do. Well, we don't have to do them, but if you're uh, if you're just doing a video once a week or so, it's pretty easy. Um, but uh, we kind of stepped it up, and we'll probably, I don't know if we'll keep this volume of videos going, but we uh, here's here's the deal, and I, I've told you our schedule before, but it just kind of helps you kind of understand what we're talking about here is on Mondays we always launch this show. So we don't do a personal video. On Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays will be videos from either RV Travel Quest, which is me and Sherry, kind of personal. RV Travel Buddy is labeled that if it's something unique or an RV tip that's kind of no good for everybody in the RV industry. Um, and maybe they don't want the personal touch of, you know, of what me and Sherry are doing on the silly side of things. Fridays is reserved for the 360s. Uh, that's just a new technology. Um, some people love them. Some people don't understand them. We understand that. And then the weekends, we'll occasionally upload a video that is a pretty video. <laughs> We're not trying to get the traffic or anything. It's just a pretty video. For example, I am been, uh, since we're in Arizona and we've got these beautiful skies, I'm doing a lot of work with our Brino um, uh, time-lapse cameras. And I'm trying to run a all-night time-lapse of the RV, and it should be coming. I got one version of it, but I want to do it again tonight. Of the RV, where you can see the Montana uh, logo on our fifth wheel at night, and you can see the stars, and you can see airplanes going through the sky, and it looks really cool, and it goes from... Uh, evening when it's actually light goes to dark and then we run it all night long till it gets light again and then we shrink it down to a short video and it looks really awesome so I'm thinking if I get a good cut tonight this particular weekend coming up uh, or the next one we'll probably have a time-lapse video launched on the weekend which is a Saturday which is just pretty uh, it's not an RV story. It's not mean, Sherry personal. It's kind of it's just our pretty stuff. And those are the things we kind of launch on the weekends. It doesn't really go with the storytelling. So um, that's the schedule. But you got to imagine that everywhere we go, the first thing we do going out the door is make sure we get a dog or whatever the animals are taking care of. And it's like, what cameras do we want to use today? Uh, do we want to be kind of like not standing out too much? We'll just take the little GoPro on a stick. Um, if I think we're going to be kind of medium, about, I want to be able to do a close-up shot because the GoPro is terrible for close-up. Uh, so I'll carry like the, our mini Canon, uh, which is a R600. And it can zoom in, and it does a great job, and it is high definition. But now we have the new Canon G40, and we love that camera. Um, the only thing I worry about is a little bigger camera. And if I'm going someplace where I don't feel secure, I don't like carrying that camera, even though the case doesn't make it make out to be like a real expensive camera. It is a $1,300 camera. And so, um, but... If Sherry and I go on road trips, and we told you in the last show we love road trips, we'll take the Canon uh, G40 uh, with the intention of we're going to get some pretty shots, and and uh, we want a really good camera to do it with. So you can imagine every time we get in a car, it's like, oh, we got to do intro for today. It's like, hi, I'm Rob. I'm Sherry. What are we doing? And today, and we talk about what we're going to do, and uh, you're doing that all the time. So uh, it's kind of habit. I mean, Sherry and I don't really think much of it, but uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, you may not, uh, I've noticed that there's one gal, um, she's in Nevada a lot. Uh, I think she's called Escapee 2012 or something like that. Real nice gal, does great videos, but she never 
you never see her in the video. She just points and shoots and narrates. And uh, uh, other folks do mostly narration behind the camera and occasionally will be in front of it, like Love Your RV. Uh, Ray, he, he does great videos, and it's all on his photography. And she, you know, you'll see his hands, and you'll be building something and all that, but uh, they don't stick their mug in front of the camera that much. And so everybody's got a little different techniques. But again, I understand that if you do it at the volume, it means, Sherry, you've got a camera in your face all the time. Then there's like uh, the Freedom Theory. Those folks, they're doing a vlog every day, and they should take the weekends off, but they still kind of do stuff on the weekends too, like we do. And uh, that's an everyday thing. And I think they've just made it part of their lifestyle. And uh, uh, it gets cumbersome. It's like you can't go anywhere without a camera. And then sure in the heck, the one time you don't take a camera, you go, why did I not bring a camera? So, I, you know, last um, piece of equipment I will use uh, in an emergency is I'll actually use my cell phone. And I, I just, I know a lot of people use their cell phones to make their videos and, and power to them. To me, it just, uh, um, it feels weird, but we, we've done a whole video with just our iPhone once because we went out to the beach, didn't think we needed a camera, and we came, and it was a video we did about all the foam on the beach at Ocean Shores, and it caught us off guard, so it's like, all right, I'm going to try to record this on my cell phone. It came out great, but... Uh, it just felt funny not having a camera with us at that time. And, of course, when you're carrying cameras with you, and the reason we don't take all the cameras with us all the time is we don't know where we're going. If we don't know the area, we only take a limited um, ammunition with us, you might say, um, in case of theft or security. We don't want to, if we get broke into our car or something, it would be devastating. Well, if all of our equipment was in there, it would really be devastating so every day we kind of evaluate what's the day going to be like and what equipment do we want so typically the most important cameras we take would be the gopro and the canon r600 which is a little guy costs about 250 bucks to buy one i could replace it and if i lost it it wouldn't be devastating uh if i have the g40 with me it's it's by my side i, ne I don't even leave it in the car um i'm guarding it it's um a little more stressful knowing that you have your better equipment with you. And, of course, we have the other cameras like uh, all the brain, uh, Brinos. Uh, we have a new Brino that they just sent us. Um, Brino's been really good about uh, catching our videos that we've been re reviewing their cameras for time lapse. And they came out with a new mini camera, and we're going to do an overview on it. And it's a mini time lapse camera that you control from your cell phone. And it's an awesome little bugger and I'm still playing with it and as soon as I get done playing a little bit and do a couple samples that I can do on a video we'll do a review on the on that camera and I'm uh, grateful to the Brino folks that sent that to us so um, welcome to the world of documentation and then um, I, and th and there's more this is probably the part that I'm the worst at is the blogging in the Facebook I don't know how people can do all this stuff. They must be just doing this stuff all day long and night. And uh, I have to, I kind of have to put a line in the sand saying enough. But if you're keeping up a blog, uh, one is I'm probably not the best writer in the world. Um, a lot of people are writing articles uh, or reviews. And uh, wow, that's great. And uh, I, that's very time consuming. I just can't find the time to be uh, uh, writing articles. And then, not only that, they're posting to Facebook or their Twitter. Um, gosh, I see some of the people that we watch are posting to Facebook all the time. And it's like, where does it stop? Where's the line? And uh, so now, I mean, the biggest part I say is where this could get totally out of control. I'm telling you, you could be so obsessed with this social stuff and, and videos and podcasts and all works that if you don't find that time to say, all right, stop, be Rob, be Sherry, be a family, enjoy your pets, go see family, shut it down. And 
So we do, and that's probably, you know, we don't get as much material out as um, other folks that we watch. And power to them at the same time, I'm, it's kind of sad in some cases that if they're doing all that, they're sacrificing something else. And um, so I hope with, you know, with me and Sherry, we do our best to document what we can. We're finding that we just, if, if you can't see what's going on with us through just our videos and the podcast, uh, I, I just can't devote enough time into writing. And uh, I wish I could. I'd love to write a new book. Uh, you may not know this, but I actually wrote two books. They're, they're actually called RV Secrets. Um, and the domain is actually called rvsecretsonline.com. And there's actually what we did is um, they were written back in like 2007. They're small little books and combined. Uh, I had two of them. And, and you know, since I've been out a while, we combined them together. And uh, now there's just uh, uh, the one RV Secrets. It used to be RV Secrets 2. And uh, they're fun. People liked them. Uh, they're not real expensive book. I sell a whole set for like 12 bucks. Uh, no, you don't need to get them. They're out of date. Um, but they're kind of humorous because they talk about our full timing back in the 2006, 2007 time period and some funny stories in there. So, but they're not big, big books. They're like 17 pages, uh, kind of more like a report type of thing. But I wouldn't mind one of these days if I felt like I had the time to actually write something. Um, it would be a little bit beyond just RVing. Um, but it'd be more of a spiritual type thing, not religious, but kind of spiritual, like what's good for the soul type thing. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the life of podcasting and having a channel. So those who do it, um, hopefully you get kind of a better idea of what it's like. Remember, we got a camera in our face all the time. Uh, some of our friends and stuff are sometimes afraid of us if we're carrying a camera. They don't want to be online. Uh, other folks think we're nuts and other people are like, why can't you just enjoy our being without the cameras? And so, I mean, so there's a negative side to it all too. And the fact of when we get back, that's a whole nother ball game. So imagine a whole day of, uh, you've been out and you've been taking pictures. Maybe you've used two cameras, a GoPro, and maybe, uh, and then Sherry's taking pictures with her Sony and, and I'm taking pictures with the uh, G40 and we get home and you think, oh, cool. Well, guess what? The work, <laughs> the work really starts then. Uh, that's nothing compared to taking the pictures. So you get home and you dump your files. That's what I call it. So you get each camera and you dump the files into, into folders that you can uh, know where everything is. And then you break out your software. And I use Corral uh, Video Studio X9 Ultimate version. And so it's like, all right, so you got to, luckily we make our intros and stuff are pre-made, so you add your intro in, and you start laying out all the f different shots. And then that's when the editing starts. And, oh, and it's like, you, you, you know, you got something you're looking at, and it's like, all right, I'd love to play this more, but it'd bore other people to death, so you cut, 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 and the cutting room floor, that's where the cutting room floor comes in. So, uh, and then you're trying to make your video short, so you're knocking off stuff that you thought was good, but then when you looked at it, going, ugh. I mean, if you guys get, can't even imagine how much you don't see. And so you're cutting it up, blending it together, um, doing uh, uh, blends from shot to shot. Um, you notice in our videos, we always have a blend. And uh, making sure there's a storyline in there. Uh, if you're doing like road shots, you have to mute the sound because people don't want to hear the road noise and you put a soundtrack to it. So you got to pick out music and I got a giant library of, of, uh, of uh, royalty free music and try not to use the same thing over and over. But you get you know, sometimes you get favorites that go with a lot of your shots and make sure the dialogue's in there. Make sure we can hear it good. Play it through. And when it looks like a, sh you know, and try to keep it under 10 minutes, that's a tough one too. And when you're totally satisfied with the layout and you play it through a couple of times and you're so sick of it and, and you put hours in, you know, an hour or two into this stuff and you, and 
you know, you can kind of tell in, in shows like on YouTube where, you know, we have to catch so many shows that, you know, the editing is sometimes we let something play too long or something. And uh, if we had more time to analyze it and play it through a couple more times, we probably would have cut more things. Um, things would be in a little bit better. Sometimes, a lot of times, audio, you wish you, you know, we shoot on the fly and you can't always have, um, you know, a shotgun mic or the kind of microphones you want or the lapel mics. Uh, you're, you know, on the side of a highway and kind of like, oh, I shouldn't be sitting here trying to take a picture of this. Um, uh, you just tend to not always have things the way you want. So the, sh the videos are never perfect. And you render it. Rendering takes forever sometimes and it gets all rendered. And what's, you know, just like the podcast, it's like, all right, now I got to make a meta tag or a description. You write all that out. And a lot of things you try to do pre-made and save yourself some work and you get all that. And then you make a graphic and you want to be original, but catchy, but not misleading. Uh, and then a lot of times uh, <laughs> in the YouTube world uh, and podcast world too, there's another thing to consider is making sure that you have a catchy phrase in your title. It's amazing. I can put something like, Sherry's gone. Oh my gosh. You know, and it's just because for today or something. And I'll get like a hundred more visitors to that particular video and still get great comments as opposed to saying, Sherry's gone to work today for a week and blah, blah, blah you know, something. So it's kind of funny. It's like when you... And, and, of course, there's a school that we're all going to when you really get into this stuff. It's called uh, YouTube Academy, and there's other material out there to kind of make us try to be better at what you're doing. Like I said, you always want to try to be better. And I include your videos and, and marketing and things like that because there, uh, you know, there is some income to make from this. Not a lot, but it helps, once again, with the tip overload uh, to kind of help us uh, uh, justify why we do this. Because a lot of people, why do you do this? Well, we do it because we like it, but it's also nice because it's a little extra funds on the on top of the pension thing, and the pension's not big, uh, trust me. And um, who knows? I mean, maybe uh, we're, we've been talking about doing some other things outside of the borders, and uh, it'd be nice to have a little extra uh, YouTube income. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it goes a long ways in different places. So... Anyway, so you're always trying to make your meta tags, your descriptions, your titles uh, catchy. And uh, uh, so when you see them, you go, oh, I got to see this this video. And, and then you judge for yourself whether uh, we got to make sure we're not misleading. Uh, a lot of folks are really, really bad about the misleading. But at the same time, if people know us, they know, oh, my gosh, there's something pretty funny going on between Rob and Sherry. And so this is a really big aspect of making videos right there. But wait, there is more. So you get your videos rendered and you got your uh, description and all that stuff done. And then you got your uh, graphics done for your header or the thing you see when you see our videos. Let's say you get all that done. Well, then you got to go upload it again. So that's where the, everybody's complaining about the Internet. And so depending on what kind of internet you got, depends on how long it takes to get that video up. And you get that video up and then you get your graphic up and you get your meta tag and your description and your uh, uh, title line in there. And then that's not it. I mean, for us, it's not over. There's the next thing is, as you notice, uh, the videos have these little cards that pop up at certain times. And so you got to put those in. And then that's not then you're not done there either. This is after everything's already uploaded. This is an hour or two later. And then you got to do these other uh, uh, hyperlinks. Let's say you're talking about a product and you have a link to another site or another video. You have to put all these links in. And so you go to your YouTube account, play the video through, find the different places where you want the links. You put them in manually. I wish it was some kind of automated way, but there isn't. And then you either decide that it's going to be when it's going to be active so you guys schedule it now for safety pe purposes people that travel like us uh, we play we get a bank or a library 
of videos, we try to kick them out a little faster than they come out. So obviously, we told you Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursday, you see RV Travel Quest. Well, there's a lot of things going on in seven days. So what we do is we'll get a backlog of videos on purpose. So when we're talking about the different areas, um, for security reasons, especially, I'd be really worried if Sherry was alone at the RV, but it's the opposite. So um, luckily I'm the one at the RV and she's actually working. And I told you I was a kept man. Anyway, so we tend to make our videos go out a week or better uh, to, by the time, if somebody was kind of evil and wanted to catch up with us for some reason, for security reasons, uh, we'd be long gone from the uh, place that we're at uh, based on the videos. And this information I'm telling you is actually documented by a lot of folks have done this already. There has been occasions where some folks have been doing this uh, well before uh, Sherry and I have uh, had problems with security or people showing up at their RV that they they're happy to see them at the same time a little surprised they didn't kind of give them a warning or anything and so uh, when we um, the other thing is if you're gonna do podcasts and you're gonna make shows like this you're gonna give up some of your privacy and um, and literally our RV has a flag on it that says RV travel buddy so I mean we're uh, and we have stickers and bumper stuff on our car so we do advertise our business and uh so we know that we are going to get approached and sometimes it's inconvenient and uh, that's you know the drawback i guess would be we're not like any celebrities but can you imagine being a celebrity where you can never go anywhere without being recognized um it's inconvenient enough when you only get recognized once in a while but can you imagine all the time so there <laughs> there's the picture of boy you want to be you want to do this too huh so of course there's one other aspect that we didn't talk about do you even have the charisma to do something like this and so i can tell you like in podcasting i know i mean i know and i don't there's so many people so much i think better than i am and I listen to uh, a lot of them, and they're great speakers. They've been doing this since they're young. And I do this for the hobby and uh, sharing. And I could do better, there's no doubt. Um, so I'm kind of medium, let's say, uh, medium poor. I, I don't know what you want to describe it, but... Uh, I must be doing a good enough job because we have repeat listeners coming back, which I'm so grateful. Thank you. Uh, and as long as my listeners know that I will try to improve every week. Um, the other part is uh, the videos. Uh, Sherry is a little more shyer than I am, if you haven't noticed. And uh, But she's getting better. And then occasionally she goes, boy, I sounded actually pretty good in that. And she's like, she's actually awesome. Very informative, very good speaker and uh, does a great job when she has the uh, charisma or in the mood to be in front of the camera. And uh, so I've met others that you kind of like, really? <laughs> it's just like, uh, and then there's others that won't even put their face in front of the camera and it's like, okay. And that's okay and sometimes you understand it and if, uh, if it's cool with you, then it's cool with them, then it's great. Uh, so. Anyway, you got to ask yourself, is this really what you want to do? I'm definitely not a pretty face. I'm funny face. Uh, so, you know, I'm, people are going to see the videos. Am, am I going to scare them to death with my ugly mug? Uh, so do you have the personality? Can you joke with yourself? And then the fact uh, that probably the last thing you really, 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 really need to know about, the feedback and the trolls. So if you put yourself out there, uh, people are going to comment. And, some, and, and there's a lot of professional commenters out there. And, and then if you click on their link from YouTube and go, there's, they haven't ever made a video. And, but they're expert watchers. And, and, that's, and, and you know, when they watch a lot of videos, they actually do, can actually give you a educated information to be better. But... Uh, they can be harsh and um, 
but that's okay. And but then you get the trolls, and then they get a little personal. And you can find you probably notice a lot of big channels that uh, do some personal stuff. I think at Andy Shell, he calls himself. He's a traveler. He shut off his comments, and I could understand. I mean, it gets out of control where the comments get nasty. They get personal, and they uh, uh, can affect you a little bit as far as how you feel about doing your shows. And it come, could come a time where you have to shut off your comments because uh, there's just too many folks out there trying to tear you down. And why they have to do that, I don't know. But it's just part of growing in this. So if you do get a channel and it starts exploding or start, or you have a podcast that starts going, you're going to start getting more and more feedback. And, and I ask for it. I mean, um, and so I get it. And... Um, 99.8% of it's always positive. Um, maybe 2% of something could be, it's never been nasty, uh, but critical sometimes, but uh, not nasty. So we've been very fortunate and I'm, I'm thankful for that. But do know that if you're going to put yourself out there, you got to realize that people don't see things eye to eye with you. And uh, young folks will look at me as an old fuddy-duddy and uh, older folks look at us as still young. And so you got to understand that they all have different perspectives on life. And uh, um, how you've been brought up has been different. Like in RVing, it's like we're middle class RVers. I can't comprehend the living in a van type thing and, and not having jobs and all that stuff. Uh, doesn't. Uh, register in my brain <laughs> it's not their fault it's mine I try to be open minded but it's just you know but I don't comment or get on their sites and, and it's like because um, they're, they're doing if they're doing a good show and they're doing a great presentation and the first the only comments I usually leave are constructive not even constructive if I have something constructive I actually will shoot them a note personally um, but normally if I ever leave a note on their videos or anything it's usually positive and also let them know i'm sharing their videos to our platform to hopefully help their uh traffic a little so uh when uh so here's the last thing you probably should know that you don't want to be alone in this thing so collaboration with others is important and it can be frustrating at sometimes uh i get frustrated with collaborations because uh, sometimes it gets one-sided and then some people, uh, as there's, you know, you always want to collaborate with someone with equal or above kind of traffic that you have. To, and the reason you're doing collaborations is, well, you like the people, but at the same time, you're trying to grow your channels and your Facebook and all that stuff. And so I, I've noticed a lot of times we collaborated and it's, uh, we're very giving and, and, and we have lots of resources. So we tend to give a lot of resources. And so, we don't typically get that in return and, and uh, only because um, it's a different generation. They're not quite the same. Uh, anyway, so, but you want to work with other folks and try to help grow things. And, and um, so you always want to ask people to subscribe. You want them to like your videos. Please share the videos. Just like this podcast, we always ask everybody, would you please tell people about our show or get a sticker from us and put it on your window so people can see that this show exists. Uh, at the same time, we've got our own responsibility to make sure that we let the world know that this show exists and we have to push it on our social networks and others and do our job as far as what's called internet marketing. But uh, this, there's still that old-fashioned marketing stuff that you need to know about is networking and telling people and working with others and interviewing others and before you know it um, things start growing and then you can taper off a little but you never want to really stop because there's always new folks coming in new platforms coming out there's always new groups being formed and you always want to kind of look around and see if there's a new group of people or um, you know different kinds of uh platforms other than just RVing that would enjoy a show like this so there you go I didn't think I'd be talking so much about the same subject on this on this show but um, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of uh, let you know what a 
a day in the life of Robin Sherry is like, and ours is mild compared to the hardcore folks that really pump out the videos and, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Snapchats and uh, the Twitters and on and on. And, just, and then the writing articles too. It, it's just relentlessly, you wonder how in the heck they ever have the time to be a, a couple, a, f a family or, or just enjoy actually the actual trips. And that kind of brings me back to why we're in silent mode a little bit when we're in Vegas. It's one of those, you know what, we really need a break and we really will show you a little bit of Vegas, but <laughs> uh, we'll show you kind of the outside scenes of all of everything. But we just, uh, we needed a, our time. And Sherry, Sherry and I needed some time. And Sherry was, has got a long break between a new contract and stuff. And so we've had these three months of really having a good time. And, and she's going to be more solid here in a couple uh, next month and and we're going to be a little more grounded and so we are kind of celebrating the fact that we have all this freedom so there you go you, so you want to be a podcaster or you want to have a channel and and document your sh your uh, your travels there you go that's the real thing and um, it's not all peaches and cream. It's a lot of work. And, and I can't tell you how many hours and hours and hours that go into all this work. And I know some people say, that's my job. No, it's not. If it's your job, uh, you'd be being paid a lot better than that. But uh, it is our job to do a good, if we're going to do this, at least do a good presentation. So that's our job is to do a good job for you. And, you know, the way we get our, 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 we get really nice comments. We love that. Our channel grows. People pick up our stickers or stuffed animals. And now uh, one of our magnets just went out the other day. And so uh, that just makes us grateful and makes it fun and makes it worthwhile. And uh, uh, we always get lots of nice stories of how we've motivated people or how somebody just got a good laugh from us and we just made their day so that was, uh, that's worth a lot of money right there so what else have we got to talk about well i want to totally change the subject here and actually talk about rvs a little bit and i thought i'd talk about what i do right away when we get to our rv space and I, it doesn't matter what region I'm in, whether it was the Northwest or coming down here to uh, the desert, um, up, and it has to do with bugs. And I was like, ugh, bugs. The problem is with RVs is the slides, and the slides at the corners, uh, how, even though, uh, even like the Montanas have a double rubber seal, but you still get a little airspace in there, and uh, the little critters just love to find their way in. And I noticed that mostly on the slide where the kitchen is because there's a scent of food or crumbs on the floor or something like that. So what I do everywhere we go is I have um, some Raid or, or bug spray. And it typically for um, ants and roaches. And, and roaches aren't really a problem up in the northwest. Spiders are actually more uh, avid up there. So what I do every time we stop is I'll spray the underbellies of the slides, especially the corners, to uh, make it at least not very tasteful for uh, any kind of critters that like to come in, especially the little sugar ants. Oh my God, sugar ants are a pain in the butt. Anyway, so uh, get in the habit of keeping a, a good bug spray. Uh, and make sure it, it's definitely for ants, roaches, spiders, those are the three main culprits, to just help keep critters out of your out of your rig. They're still going to get in. You still get the mosquitoes and stuff. But anyway, and you got to be careful with your pets. But um, uh, I, every place we go that's new, I at least right away hit the rig with uh, bug spray on the underside of the slides. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't mind doing it on the top side, but I can't reach them. I had to break out a ladder to do that. But typically, uh, um, the biggest thing that 
we found down south, and, and we're having a little trouble with it here, but not like we did in the old days, uh, sugar ants, they haunt you. And if you ever get them, um, even when you're up in the northwest, they'll still haunt you. So uh, constantly leaving uh, uh, little, what do you call, ant motel things um, out just to try to make sure. But it seems like it's impossible to get rid of them. And I guess in other states, which we haven't been in, you got a, the other problem of uh, ladybugs and some other kind of critters that uh, constantly will terrorize you. And I also try to spray like our, our um, levelers, anything that hits the ground and touches your RV, your tires, things like that. I try to spray around there uh, just to be a deterrent. And we have not had any weird problems and stuff, but there was a time and here's a great story for you. I think it was three or four years ago, before we got the fifth wheel, we actually had a comfort trailer. And we took it down to Arizona to go see our newborn grandson. And uh, we're talking brand new. This was a brand new trailer. And we took it down, and I think at one of the places along I-5, California, we stayed at a casino overnight, pretty uh, deserty and stuff. Anyway, we were down in Phoenix, and sure, he's the worst thing in the world that... Uh, we ever want to, Sherry does not like cockroaches. And that's not that uncommon in Arizona. But anyway, so I don't know how. And to this day, I don't know how. But a very big cockroach, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches in size, got into our RV. And, I mean, this is a very new RV. So um, we don't know how it got in. And, uh... Not only that, it was in our bedroom on Sherry's pillow, and she noticed it when she went into the bedroom, and she goes running out back. She goes, oh, she won't believe what she saw. And I go, went in there, and I was like, oh, my God. It was, and I, I did, I grabbed it and killed it and flushed it down the toilet. Anyway, but <laughs> anyway, it's like, how did that thing get in? And it's one of two things. One is it got on her clothes somehow, or it when we stopped in another place, it got on the underside of our slide, and we actually brought it in when we pulled the slides in. That's the only way I could think of it. The darn thing got in there. And so to this day, it's like, all right, um, if I would have stopped and done my little spray thing, it would have been a deterrent. We probably wouldn't have had that critter in there. They're just, the, that's what critters do. They just get about finding if there's an opening or if you haven't sealed your pipes or you got an opening from your uh, cupboards and stuff like that to go into the underbelly of your RV. You need to seal those up. And so, anyway, that's why we got in the habit of constantly spraying our slides. And you probably also heard us talk about that we sealed every kind of hole we got with uh, uh, steel wool and uh, spray foam insulation to seal anything that uh, can cause critters to get in and that's how we had a mouse get in there and we thought we were sealed well and we found out there was a whole large hole in the side of the wall inside a cupboard that never got sealed and so that's how the little mouse got in so um uh, just some things you want to consider when you're stopping every time is is well uh, at least that little habit of getting in the habit of spraying uh, you can have a nice, clean, the best brand new RV and they'll still get in. And uh, uh, cleanliness is always important, keeping your counters clean, all that stuff. Sh uh, the sugar ants are attracted to anything that's uniquely sweet. And so if, uh, don't give them a cause to come in, but they still come in. So I hope that's a good recommendation for you. Always keep a can of bug spray and spray the outside slides of your RV uh, and what, it doesn't matter if it's a fifth wheel or a motorhome we had really pro big problem with sugar ants getting into our motorhome back in the day and uh, we couldn't get rid of them it was a nightmare and uh, and once they get in they'll somehow magically hide somewhere in your RV and they come out just when you don't expect them so Anyway, uh, we're running out of time here. So I want to thank you very much for listening to the show. I hope we got gave you kind of a new perspective of what it's like to document uh, being on the road. And I am, once again, very grateful for those folks who have been buying stickers and stuff from us. We appreciate it. Or doing a, 
um, tips to us. We appreciate that. And most of all, we really love the feedback and the comments we get. And if they're critical, uh, we love it when you send us a private message. Uh, that way we can analyze it and uh, really say, what could we do about this if we can do anything about it at all? And then should we address it on the show? And so I hope uh, I want to thank Jennifer for that great comment about uh, some repetitive things we were doing. And uh, uh, so please get a chance. Go to rvtalkradio.com. Go to the com contact page. Send us your thoughts, your ideas, products or services that may be RV related that can go on the show. And if you want to uh, send me a direct email, just go to Rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com and love to hear from you. So I'm Rob Scribner and my wife is Sherry Scribner and this is RV Talk Radio. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye now.